There is a ladder from the Mother Earth leading to the Father Sky. And on this ladder the turtles are moving slowly but steadily towards the light. The load they carry proudly is not only their home, the protective shell, but also hundreds of years of histories, experiences and knowledge. They are wise and although they move so slowly, they know where to go. They know that time has come. And they came from many places. They tasted the waters of many seas and oceans. They were hidden to give birth in many lands and coasts. They saw the life and world unfolding into the cycle from birth to death and then again to birth like in a spiral. And they are here again to see the light and show it to the others. They know how it is to live in darkness, to feel the pain and doubt, to fear and struggle in hard times, but still they have a lot of hope and wishes to fulfill. They thread into the wisdom's will and in the nights of shadow they bless their many untold stories with drops of blood and tears. They knew about the monkeys. Once the story was spread, it lived and shared around the world. The monkeys lived on an island and ate the fruits of Mother Earth as any other primates. But then one day they were taught to clean the fruits before the meal and this became a habit. And the habit spread around in other islands as the waves made by a stone thrown away into the water. The turtles learned from the monkeys to do the same, to feed their heart with fruits and fruits from the earth's womb and to teach about the sacred temple and space into the daily life. Now they are ready to give birth again to something new and beautiful, a new way of being here and now as it should be. In circle they will meet and share what they have learned and saw. And from the circle's heart they will spread seeds of love, wisdom and trust and wait to see them sprout and grow into the consciousness. To end and start again the circle they will celebrate in a co-creation act the joy of life, the nature's flow and commonly shared abundance. The story of my circle of women started in 2016 in, while I was in Portugal. But the vision I had during the meditation in 2017 made me understand better why and what was also um, the purpose of this activity with women and for women. After I moved to Norway in 2016, I understood that this country hosts so many women and mothers coming from many places around the globe. And this beautiful northern country with wonderful landscapes and amazing people offers shelter to many families escaping poverty, conflict and other difficult life situations. This reality, combined with my own perception and experience of how it is to be abroad, having to restart again a new home and life, a single mother, motivated me to write a poem that is a prayer to the goddess embodied as Mary of Magdala. I am planning to present this prayer, possibly singing it, to the International Convention of Priestesses that is going to happen next year in 2020, in October, in Crete. 
After 5,000 years, a goddess priestess from Australia, Anik Duke, had the amazing inspiration to send a worldwide call for gathering all women who worship the goddess in a sacred place, with so much history and legend, the island of Crete. And I will represent the goddess's priesthood of Norway with this simple but touching prayer that is also a dedication to all women who had to leave their homeland and established a home and a legacy in foreign lands. My land I left, my feet walked other lands and over many seas, and for so long my eyes only the sky would see, in search of omens and signs to keep up the long road, to find a shelter and a new safe home again. I was told not to cry, I was told to keep strong and to not break. I heard so many crying, I saw so many in pain, and hopelessly searching a meaning for their struggle and despair. When I found my new place, when I felt home again, I knew I can stop my crying and wandering so I can find my soul. My heart was full of tears, my womb was full of grief and anger. My eyes were burdened by secrets hidden in the night shadows. Keeping still, I found my craving. Looking into the stars, I understood my path and mission. Grounding my body into the Mother Earth, I called in all those from the past and told their stories to not be forgotten. I saw myself in the deep waters of the lunar light and I could start to sing my song, the song of many, the goddess will and wish in sacred sounds. In Anarakma, all is love, Ashe, Aho, and blessed be. Why we gather in circle, we women? The circle is a sacred geometrical figure representing the cycle of life, from birth to death and again to birth. It is a never-ending story, chain or concept. And in the circle we are all equal to each other, there is no hierarchy and we can start and begin something in any point of it. A circle represents the whole and each part of it. When women meet in a circle and create a sacred intention for their presence in that circle, something magical happens. We open our hearts when sharing ourselves and our energies, start to intertwine and communicate, creating a space without time, but connected to all the times and spaces when the goddesses were worshipped. In each of us women, the goddess speaks and shows herself in this sacred space. We listen to the other women in this space without judgment and with an open heart, showing compassion and love and understanding to our sisters. We are thus welcome in a safe and nurturing space where our voice can be heard and cherished as unique, but also as a part of a beautiful choir. The energy and the blessings that can be created in a circle of women have the same effect as the waves of a water surface when we throw a stone inside it. It ripples around and spreads in larger circles, creating more positive energies and love in the world. This is actually the basic concept of the morphic field, also explained by Jean Shinoda Bolen in her book The Millionth Circle. I took inspiration from this book when I started to organize circles of women. What are we doing as women when we gather in a circle? Well, when women gather in a circle like the ones I organize, we usually follow an established structure that has some flexibility as I always have to consider the time schedule, the availability and also 
the energies each of the participants bring inside the space. I usually open the circle with a blessing, calling in my female lineage of ancestors and all the others do the same. Then we can introduce ourselves if we don't know each other already. And I usually dedicate a few minutes also to present the main topic that we are going to work with during that session. Then there is a meditation or a shamanic journey and other exercises with sharing the experience of each participant in between them. I like in particular to combine self-inquiry in pairs with constellation work, which is a very powerful tool of psychotherapy in the alternative uh, world. And also I use a lot of creative expressions. So sometimes we dance, sometimes we draw or even do some card divinations. We also sing and invocate the goddess in prayer and meditation. In the last year, in 2019, I followed a specific program dedicated to Mary Magdalene and her four archetypes, the maiden, the mother, the priestess and the crown, having spent three sessions, one session per month usually, for each of them who wished could also do some homework with the purpose to deepen her self-knowledge and the relationship between her own body and spirit, the lunar cycle and also the nature and Mother Earth. So these gatherings in circle became a series of workshops of three hours each for personal and spiritual development and I call this series the Wheel of the Grail. If followed diligently and until the end of a full year cycle, this course can actually lead to many positive changes and progress in each participant's life. I myself felt a lot of progress in my own process of self-awareness and self-development, as I was a teacher and at the same time a student. Sometimes there are also challenges and these challenges oblige us to look better in our own fears, wounds and patterns. But through ritual and meditation, we can overcome these challenges and bring more clarity and peace to our own life. Why women's circles are important for the times we live in now? It is true that we live in challenging times, when the entire world is called to screen all its scars and wounds and get into the next step of evolution. Patriarchal systems, beliefs and norms are still very much in place and deeply embedded in the collective psyche. But the good news is that all over the world, more and more women start to bring other women in circle and create their magic and healing. There is an increasing consciousness about the importance of these gatherings and about the kind of energy and the usefulness of this energy for the entire world. I wish to be part of this phenomenon and movement as I truly believe that women's contribution in healing and spiritual evolution of this world is fundamental. But first, women need to look to themselves and get to know themselves accept themselves and also cherish their own gifts and skills, coming into their own power and expressing their will and heart wishes. And they also need to trust themselves and each other, as for too many centuries we grew up with the idea that we have to compete, to be better, more beautiful and prosperous than other women. But the real power of a women's circle stands in understanding and accepting all the other women as equal and sisters in soul and purpose. Our presence in front of the other women has to empower the others not to diminish or intimidate. And this is actually the very principle for starting to build community of women by sharing who we are, what we know and what we do for a common and higher good. In times of isolation and technological advancement, women can start to teach and show to the world how important the connection between inner and outer nature is and to bring back the concept of the village of the support that a community can bring to all of us
Senhor este momento. Respira profundamente. 